Oh, it's so good to see you. I want to welcome those of you who are here and then also welcome our online audience because joining us is um, about half as many are live as are online, which is just amazing. It's about six or 700 gals that are joining um, our study. And some are in the watch parties in Australia, some are in England, some are in all kinds of states across the US. So it's just, it's pretty exciting. So we're all a part of a larger group. And um, so our mom time group is here. So for those of you, if you could maybe just, we'll just do a little, since it's our first night, let's do an introductory. Um, How many are here for the very first time? You've never been to a mom time. You don't know what in the world mom time with Debbie is. Okay, I'm Debbie. So that takes care of that part. Um, I'm married to Pastor Brett. That takes care of that part. Why is Debbie up there? My name's Debbie. Am I gonna get in rotation and get up there too? No, because there's only one that's married to Brett. That's me. So, um, (laughs) but mom time started a long, 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 long time ago. I mean, technically, if if we could show her, raise her hand. Where's Judy? Judy Slaughter. Okay, do you see her? She always says whenever I point her out, she feels like a little halo goes ding above her head. But technically, for me, mom time started a long, long, long time ago, like 31 years ago, when I would go to what was technically at that time Titus II Bible studies that Judy was doing. I don't know what you called it, Hearts at Home or something like that? Builders Workshop, Home Builders, that's right, Home Builders. (laughs) How could I forget? Um, But Judy really modeled that Titus II, which we've come more familiar, I'm so thankful that we're in a church that is countering what the culture says in terms of really embracing the fact that we really have a God-given role as women, that we were born women, that our sex was determined when, let's say it, our parents had sex, and that sperm dictated what you were gonna be, and you're a woman, and I'm so thankful that God made me that way, that he gave me my identity that's in Christ, because I know him now, because I have given him my life. So I'm so thankful, level one, level one, that's where we're at. So mom time, you can already tell right here, Ooh, I think I'm in the wrong, I'm gonna go ahead and leave, because she's gonna be controversial. We might be controversial, but... We're not when you look at God's word. It's clear, it's black and white, and it's so freeing because what did Jesus say? The truth will set you free. So the mom time group was really created, really you know, based off of what I learned in Home Builders, which was really modeling Titus 2, really trying to help the older women to come alongside and really help those younger women to be if you wanna use a you know, term that we're really used to right now that's been horribly used, empowered, but really to empower us according to what the gospel says of what we really should be able to do as moms, that it's a God-given right role responsibility that we really should take very, very seriously. So maybe, maybe 20 years ago, um, and I know that you guys know how this feels. Uh, You've given birth, right? And half the next five years is like a big blur because it takes a while to get over the first labor, let alone the two, three, four, however many kids you have, right? Some of you might be like me, I have like chronic anemia, so it took a little while to figure out, wow, I'm not just tired because of kids. I like have got no blood. So there's it, by the time I figured all that stuff out, I think maybe my kids were in junior high. So that for you new moms, it's, it's gonna be a while, <laughs> but it's okay. But I just remember, because at that time, the house that we lived, um, I had planted blueberries and strawberries. And uh, when the kids were younger in that house, we used to love uh, for the two weeks out of the year when it's you know in season, oh, let's go get the blueberries and strawberries and then let's put them on our food. And it was just a really fun thing for me to teach the kids about fruit and how when you tend to things, there's fruit and you get to enjoy the fruit. And so whenever I could, there'd be a life lesson for the kids. So I remember though, suddenly the kids were gone and, they, and, and school was happening. And I had that hovering feeling that could be 
oh no, I feel maybe a little bit lost. But really quickly, the Lord helped me do what so many, so many, and the Titus two women will help you do this, and the Lord has helped me do this, and women have definitely, <laughs> definitely, they're in the, in the crowd right now saying, we definitely have helped her with this, to remind ourselves that the best way to get ourselves out of that little, you know, little hump that we can feel, that slope, that little valley, is to, what can I do for someone else? Instead of looking at me and what I can do for me, how can I help someone else? How can I bless someone else? How can I reach out to someone else and maybe pass on to them a few things that might benefit them in their home or whatever? So I was talking to the Lord about this while I was also probably in an arguing match with the dandelions that were growing or whatever. So just thinking, you know, Lord, what could I be doing? And the Lord just dropped it in my mind because at that time, Tad and Marna, who Marna is Judy's daughter-in-law. So Tad and Marna were um, at, at Athey Creek because they had come back from Vanuatu. And I called her up and I said, Marna, I have this idea. And so anyone that knows Marna knows that this is how she would answer. Yeah, because she has the voice of an angel. And I, she says, well, what's that? And I said, okay, I have this idea. What if we... Uh, we, because I always need to have somebody in a partner in crime, right? So um, what if we do a little bit of like, you know, discipleship? Maybe we could get some moms who maybe are new moms and maybe some who have toddlers and maybe some who have preschool. And what if we just break it up into like three weeks increments and just share with them a little devotional and share with them, you know, some of the things that have helped us. She's like, oh, that's, that's a really great idea. So we literally, we were meeting in the school. We rented a house that's someplace, I don't even know where it is off of in Westland somewhere. We rented a house. The main floor was where the small group of like 15 ladies, maybe 10, um, met. Some of them had never had kids before. Some of them had, had just little ones. And then the preschool babysitting was in the second story. Who does this now? Nobody does this. But within the second story, we got somehow we got a babysitter to come and babysit. So that was our first really like mom time. It wasn't really called mom time back then, but that, that was what we did. And then after that, a whole nother story, Judy came to live up here. And so then she started having essentially mom time. But what did we call them when you were doing that? Do you remember? Ah, Tuesday morning. They were called Tuesday morning or maybe Friday morning. I don't know what they were called, but they were fun. So moms would get together in the mornings and Judy would sometimes do a series, but also sometimes she might have panels up. And so that was really fun to be able to participate in that way too. And, um, and then now things got big, you know? So there's a lot of opportunity for the women's ministry and there's a whole counseling, whole counseling division that Judy oversees all of that. And she is, if you're a Titus II, I'm gonna put you on the spot, sorry. Online audience, you can't see this part. So do, 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 do. Just take, go get coffee. Okay, if you're a Titus II woman, would you please stand up? Cause I want everyone to see who you are. Could you please? Good, I'm so glad. Okay, these are the ladies. You guys go to these ladies. If you need prayer, if you need help, just, you can sit down. Okay, so if you need prayer, if you just need help, if you're like, I have a question that I think uh, actual, like a woman who maybe is a little bit older than me would actually know this question, but I just don't know what to do. I mean, maybe it's something that you're just in a funk and you're like, wow, I don't even know how to like write a check for the bill or what bill pay is or whatever. Like, I'm just saying, I'm really thinking out the box, okay? But like those ladies can help you with so many of those things. And then there's a whole counseling team that Judy has really cultivated to help with like maybe the bigger, like higher level things. But these gals are available today after we get done meeting this evening. If you want prayer or if you want have a question about the study tonight, whatever it is, and they will be available throughout the next five weeks. But they're also available during the week for a phone call or going to coffee or, you know, whatever the case may be. They're a friend. It's like a nice way to have a legit friend. <laughs> so I really hope that you'll take advantage of that. So also because, uh, and I, so I'm sorry about the announcements, but I have to kind of get the logistical stuff out of the way so that we have, you know, the next five weeks kind of 
organized. So um, for those of you who are here the first time, part of what we have built in to mom time is the doors open at six o'clock so that you can come and have that fellowship time that a lot of you are really, really hungry for. You don't sometimes get a lot of opportunity to not have someone doing this while you're talking, you know, to somebody at church and you're like, oh, gotta go, let's go. So this is your space to do that. You have an hour a week for the next five weeks to, to be able to do that. Um, and then the other thing is for the online audience, we 100% encourage you to have dinner first or if you're having this, in the, if you're actually airing this and then having um, you know, lunch or brunch, do something like that so that there's fellowship you know, for you too. Because we, we really want to encourage the fellowship part. It's so vital. And just making those connections is, is just pretty huge. It's, it's, a, neat, it's a neat thing. Um, the other thing before we get started here. Okay, the other thing I wanted to say, point out, because this is different, and then we'll uh, start getting into the study. But you'll notice that we have um, all received a journal. And then you should have also, inside your journal, would have been a little card that said, stay tuned, because we had a little production, you know, little thing. And so you're gonna get a little surprise in about a week, I think. We're on target, I think, for them to be going out. So what those are, um, I'll explain it to you when, they, when I know you have them. Stay tuned. How's that? Because I don't want to ruin it. It's going to be super fun, though. You'll, you'll be happy. Okay, so if you guys have your journals, I'm going to start um, by, and we'll, we'll just say a prayer here in just a second. But I want you to notice something that you may not have noticed. So actually, when you really look at the foil, you see when you go like that, you see the foil. Um, in the design here, and you could see it behind me in a minute, not yet, hold on, they're not changing that yet. It's, I told them not to, too. Okay, maybe actually it was up during worship. Okay, so all this around here is actually Philippians 4, 8. So it's pretty sweet. So if you look like this, it's like true, noble, right, pure, lovely, Admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, Philippians 4, 8. So um, isn't that pretty? It's so pretty, isn't it? And Jess, this is what my sweet friend Jess, who's right there, when I said, Jess, we're gonna be talking about resetting our brains, our minds. So how, I want it to be something to do with our brains. And, and I was like, it needs to be like kind of swirly and like this and that and like how our, like our fibers in our brains and like all the connectors and the neurons. And she's like, what? So <laughs> then she thought about it for a second and she was like, oh, I get it, yeah. So, and so this is what she came up with. And isn't it pretty? Yeah, so this is kind of the same. But it's like the whole point is that we need to set our minds upward. And so that's what the arrow is all about. And then all the swirly stuff is like, yeah, sometimes we feel like life is going crazy. But just remember that God's word is the settler of all things. And so this five weeks, what I hope more than anything is that you'll take away that the Lord is with you in your mind. He's with each one of us. And we'll talk about that more as we go on even this evening. But I wanted to um, just point that out, that everything's purposeful on this little design. And then lastly, um, before we get started, I wanna, um, I wanna pray. <laughs> Let's go ahead and close our eyes and ask the Lord to um, settle my thoughts and bring us all together as a group. So Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you that you are God. I thank you that you love us so much. And I thank you that, Lord, you can take us wherever we're at and you can help us through each storm that we face, through the calm waters as well as the rough seas, you're there with us. And I thank you so much for that, drawing us to you. So I pray for this uh, study tonight as I share with the women I pray that you would bless them and nourish them, nourish their minds, nourish their hearts, nourish their bones, Lord. I just know that you can see straight through to our souls and you're so good in that way. You're so good in the way that you have made us with our mind and our emotions. We ask for you to help us settle issues tonight. 
I pray your Holy Spirit would be in this room and that issues that have come up, that you would help us to work through those things. God, I thank you so much for just the unlikelihood of you coming to us, but and yet you choose us. And we're grateful for that, Lord. And so I pray for this uh, rest of the evening, and I thank you so much for the blessings that you've already given us and for more that await us, Lord. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So I, I first wanna read you something, and I just want you, because it's important for you to hear my heart on this. So one, one of a really beautiful kind of folk singer, Christian, beautiful Christian um, uh, artist, is her name's Ellie Holcomb. And a lot of you have heard of her before. Um, many of you might not know her, but maybe if you throw back to the days of Brown Bannister, he is literally the most decorated artist of all time, of all, of all time in music history. He is just such a notable writer. And Ellie Holcomb is her father's daughter and she has his giftings. She knows how to put music and string together in such a beautiful way. And she has lyrics that are just beautiful. And she just gets to my heart. It's like, and I think so many people who hear an artist like that, when you feel like they get you, then that's who you're gonna listen to for the rest of your life, you know? So um, I was really blessed to be able to hear her a few months back um, when she was in concert. Um, and she doesn't only sing Christian music, she sings, like I said, folk and country and stuff, so all kinds of things. But this particular lyric is, is a Christian lyric and it's so pretty. Um, it says, no one's too far, no one's too broken. I just want that to soak in for whoever needs that. God says his heart is full of compassion. Everlasting arms hold us together when we're falling apart. He is the God of all comfort. And then the very last line is the God of all comfort. So I'm just gonna read it again. And I want you now this time to apply it to a child that maybe is absolutely fallen away from God. No one's too far, no one's too broken. God says his heart is full of compassion. Everlasting arms hold us together. When we're falling apart, he is the God of all comfort. God of all comfort. Now I'm gonna read it again and I want you to apply it to someone who, and this, this gets into a heavier arena, but we are going to see this more and more as the church. And we need to be available for folks who are struggling. So now I'm gonna read it and I want you to apply it to a person who has come to church, who you maybe can't tell if they were a boy or a girl, but they're coming out of something really, really heavy. So I'm gonna read that again for that person who's seeking God, who's coming here. No one's too far, no one's too broken. God says his heart is full of compassion. Everlasting arms hold us together. When we're falling apart, he is the God of all comfort. God of all comfort. So <clears throat> you take that. The reason why I read that several times was because um, it's just a short little song. It's like maybe two minutes and you guys can download it and all that. I just think there's so much work to do in terms of our, the necessity that we have in terms of our heart and our ability to be able to marry together the calling that we have in our life as disciples of Christ and then what that looks like as we pour into our kids or we pour into the body of Christ or we come upon a broken situation or we have a broken husband or we have a broken family member, and what does that look like? And for each one of us, it's gonna look different. But the Holy Spirit exactly knows your situation, and that's what's so amazing about God, is that he's not surprised by whatever your situation is. If you've got one child or 10 kids, if you've lost a child, sadly, if you have had a stillbirth and you don't know the answer as to why that happened, again, no one, no one's too far, no one's too broken. You're not too broken for God. 
and your kids are not too broken for God. So that's the sweetness of that. Now, going back to these uh, sweet little journals, in the past, we've done a couple of books. Um, I don't know if you've kind of thumbed through, but in this, to help you be reminded of the teener plaps, we've got the true, some really pretty art in here. So it's just your little surprise. As you're journaling, you're gonna come upon some really pretty art. Now, that's my incentive for you because I really want us to take notes tonight and write down tons of scripture. Don't feel like you have to just, just take you know, everything vigorously. In the past, we've maybe done workbooks and there's questions and answers. But last, um, last summer, Judy knows, I called her and I said, Judy, here's the problem. And she said, what? And I said, I do not feel a piece about doing a workbook. I'm just not feeling a piece about it. And then I asked her a question. Okay, I skipped the part where Judy listened because that's like, she's the master listener. Okay, so she said, "Uh uh-huh. And I said, so here's something I noticed. And she said, what's that? And I said, I noticed that in all those years when you were teaching, you did not ever have any workbooks or anything. You totally could have done that. You had massive amounts of content, 100% you could have done it. And I said, well, now why didn't you do that? And she very nonchalant, matter of fact, no problem. This is where, well, this is where Judy is, right? She looked at me and she said, well, I just didn't want the moms to have work. And I was like, wow, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Now I know why I am not supposed to do a workbook because we don't need to stress you out. So that's, this is, it's a, take a breath. This is, a, this is the fun couple of five weeks here, you know, where you get this time. So you don't have homework necessarily, but I want you to have like God work. I want you to have like God time. So that's, so it's mom time and then you're gonna go home and have God time, <laughs> okay? So uh, you'll see as, as the whole entire week and the weeks progress, I am gonna get you a, like, I'm gonna feed you a bunch of meat from the scripture, right? Like the Bible says, let us get past milk, let us get to the meat because that's what actually is nourishing for us. So um, I, that's what my hope is, is that you'll journal, you'll have some time of literally writing out scripture. I know for me, literally writing out scripture has been transformational. When I talk to you about the whole brain thing and all the swirly stuff going on, scripture is where it's at. Actually typing it out or writing it out is so good in my life. So that's, that's my big Titus 2 coming in here for you. Write down scripture, okay? Now the other part I wanted to tell you, okay, is why, why am I up here by myself? I shared with a couple of moms before this started, and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just gonna share this story with you because I feel like I should. <laughs> and I think it's because, um, well, forget it. I'm not gonna tell you why. Let's let the Lord Jesus tell you why. Okay, <clears throat> this is how this happened. Okay, so I was gonna do mom time, and my heart so much, I love the Titus 2 ministry so, so, so much. I I mean, I can't even tell you how much I value the women who voluntarily give of their time to love on you all, right? And I really wanted to highlight those women. I wanted to highlight that. And so we were all in, you know, like we had our, like I went and talked to them at their meeting and the whole thing, right? And it was all in. And I had a schedule and like they had volunteered, like they were coming up with me and we were going to have them up and the whole thing, which we may still do. But um, then I got this little ding and I looked at my phone and it was from Judy who never initiates her way on things. That Judy Slaughter never like initiates or pushes her way in on anything. Okay, which is why her counseling is so effective because it's the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's solid, okay? So I'm like, oh, this is great. She's gonna be my first person that I have up. Like we shook on it, you know? And so I read the text and I'm like, she's backing out. 
But then I reread the text and I was like, she's not backing out. I think God's trying to tell her something. And so then, and the text was like, I'm praying for you for mom time. So excited, but I really feel like as much as I keep praying, the Lord keeps on, and I love this. I practically should get out my phone and read it verbatim because it's so Judy language that it's like, it should be God speak. It's, it's how we should learn this language. But the impression that God gave her was just that, there, that we shouldn't have a panel up tonight. Okay, so I was like, hmm, that was not what I was thinking. <laughs> That was not ever what I was thinking. I wanted to have the panel up. And so, cause I was thinking of all the good things. I was like, oh, you can meet the ladies and Titus too, and we're gonna talk and all these different things. And I just thought it would just be so beneficial. I had all these things that I was ready to figure out. So I thought, this is just not what I'm thinking. So we went back and forth a little bit. I was like, I think I, think I even said, I don't think you're right. <laughs> Like, I don't think you're hearing God right. <laughs> I'm like, who am I to say this to her? <laughs> I was like, I don't think you're getting the message right. So then I thought, well, what has Judy taught me all these years? She has always taught me, go to my husband. He is my covering. So I thought, <laughs> this is a slam dunk. I mean, I'm gonna go to Brett and he is gonna be all about getting the panel up because I know it's less of Debbie. That was my whole point, like, less of me, let's have, let's share, you know. And I explained it to him and I said, this is what Judy says. And I said, I just don't get it. She's been my mentor for over 35 years. How could she be wrong? What is going on? And, and what is happening? And oh, and this is not at all what I planned. And, and I said, so what do you think about this? That's another thing I learned from Judy. You ask your husband, what do you think about this? And I, again, I thought, this is a slam dunk, man. He is gonna so side with me. And he went, so Judy said that, huh? And I said, yes. And he said, I think you should go with what Judy says. And I was like, oh, I can't believe it. So then tonight, I said that story um, to a couple of moms. And uh, they were talking to me and they were saying, well, you seem so calm for tonight. And I, usually I'm a total, really bad wreck. I don't know why I'm calm tonight, except for maybe this story that I'm gonna tell you right now, which is what I told them. I said, the thing is, is what I told you. And I said, you know, the other part of this is, you know, C.S. Lewis really resisted God all the way through till he was saved, even after he was saved. He so did not wanna be a Christian. He fought against it. He tried to figure out how many ways around not becoming a Christian until he finally realized he was a Christian, regrettably, you know? And the point of that is that we all know his intellect was like, pew, right? But it was his flesh that was obstructing the way. And so what I said to these two moms, I said, I think the reason why I am calm is because after telling the story about the Judy thing and how way off I was on that and totally thinking I had it figured out on how I was gonna have my husband be able to corral the situation and basically get my way, right? No, that was all sidelined. And so when I was talking to the moms, I was I, this today, this evening, I said, I think the bottom line is, I think that the Lord has been showing me the past little while, in this past 14 days or whatever, since this whole thing happened, um, that we do not, we should not be walking according to our flesh at, at all. So even if what we think looks good and seems good, but we need to walk by faith, like we cannot be walking according to how we think it's gonna be in terms of our, checklist, you know? And so I think the freedom of that, at least maybe next week will be a different story. I mean, maybe I ate right today. I don't know. But like, at least right this second, I'm like, you know what I'm going to share with you tonight? I'm going to be okay with sharing with you. Um, not because of me though. Like I am out of this equation. It is 1 million percent because I know that the Lord is in us being together. And I know that he's in our time together. And 
as much as I just balk against it, and Judy has really encouraged me, like, honey, you need to share. The women want to hear. And I'm like, no, I don't want to hear that. No, no. And I don't know why all that is, okay? But, it's, but it is what it is. And so, so I am here, and so I'm available. And, so, and it's, so it's fun to be in that place where, okay, I know that I'm not doing this because of something that's self-motivated. It's, I know that I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. And I know that you're here because you're supposed to be here too. And so then that makes it exciting. So now let me read this little ditty again to you. Okay, now that I've gone through all that. Because yesterday when I was going through this, I was bawling my eyes out because like, oh Lord, what are you doing (laughs) for me, for us, for all of us as we bring our minds to him? No one's too far, no one's too broken. God says his heart is full of compassion. Everlasting arms hold us together when we're falling apart. He is the God of all comfort. Now we know that that's totally based on scripture. Isaiah 30, 31, 32, going on to the 50. I mean, I love the whole book of Isaiah. This is based a lot on that, where truly he is the God of all comfort. We serve a God that has everlasting arms. And that's, that's who we come to tonight. That's who we can fall on tonight, is those everlasting arms of God. And that your arms as a mom would symbolize that for your kids when we branch on over and talk about some of the mom things that have to do with discipline or, or whatever, as things go on in these next weeks, and they will, let that be your guide that when I bring my arms out, are they a symbol of nurturing and love and everlasting arms that God provides? And for those of you who are yet to be moms, I cannot wait for you to hold your baby. I cannot wait for you to have that feeling For me, that first time of holding a baby was the biggest rush of love that I would have ever imagined to have. And it still gets me now, you know? It's beautiful being a mother. And I know that there's a lot of people out there, kind of funky voices out there, and I think it's a real minority, but they're being very loud, that would maybe want to destroy your confidence in being a mom. But just know, you have been handpicked by God. So as we head on into this study, I just want to remind ourselves, one of the key scriptures, if you could just write this down and then look it up later, although it is on your journal, I showed you that already, is Philippians 4.8. Because it is so true. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. The study is called Set Your Mind, and we get that from Colossians 3.2. And tonight I put up the amplified version because I, I just absolutely love it. It says, set your mind and keep focused habitually on things that above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. Boy, is that not a really good marching order for us? to understand that there is a difference between thinking about things that have temporal value and between things that are actually heavenly and are long lasting. And we are to habitually set our minds on those things that last. For your children, it doesn't matter what shoes they wear or what clothes they have, or if there's a hole in this and that, it do- those things don't matter. How great your meals taste don't even matter. Too much. I mean, if you want them to come back for dinner another time, you might want to have them, you know, work on that. But, but you know what I'm saying? Like we can put so much stock in the right color and in the right this and all these things that are very, very temporal. And it's a crazy thing. But as, as you know, as we get, as we go north, our body goes south, you know, and we just, it's temporal. I mean, stuff on the outside, temporal, but stuff on the inside is eternal. And that's just really, really, really what you want to teach your children. But you are going to have an easier time teaching your children if you yourselves are habitually also practicing that. It's really, really key to successful parenting, in my opinion, 
In Psalm 100, another way for us to just beat the truth into our lives is through praise. Psalm 100 says, let the whole earth shout triumphantly to God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. That is just a, a beautiful, beautiful way to allow yourselves to be thinking about the Lord. What is his, his people, that's you. In 1 Peter 1 through 3, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because of his great mercy, his great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You have a hope in heaven that will never fade. Unlike our skin, I've had skin cancer three different times. Three, I'm, a, I'm a triple crown. I've had all three of the ones, right? Basal, melanoma, whatever the other one is. I'm tired of it. Over it. I got them though. Let's see, there's, oh, squamous. That was a good one. Two weeks before the kid's wedding. That was scary. But you know what? The Lord brought me through those trials, right? And what's the big lesson on that? Man, our, our skin is just, it's an outside package. It's just, it's weak. It can't withstand certain things. Temperatures mess us up. Our metabolism gets kind of tweaked. If we don't get enough sun, our vitamin D gets off and then we get depressed and sick and oh my word. But if we get too much sun, we'll get skin cancer. Like, whoa, thankfully we've got this scripture. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. When you've got your little kiddos, there is gonna be a grandparent or a great grandparent who's gonna go to heaven. And this is an excellent scripture for you to share so that they can understand where grandpa went or where did grandma go they went to some place where they're imperishable now. There's nothing bad there. And they'll never get another wrinkle. They'll never look older. Their mind is okay. Their body works. There's no more pain. That's where they went, where our living hope is. That's how you pass on to your kids the things that are really, really going to matter. When you talk to them about identity, always remember to go to Genesis 1 31, God saw all that he made and it was very good. The Lord made you, he made you very good. You can ask your kids when you're cooking something and you're making something, making cookies, what are we making? What's it gonna be? Very good. Where do we get that scripture? God saw all that he made and it was very good. Give your kids the meat, give it to them. Give it to them. They need it. You need it. It will change your heart and your mind, and it will help them change their heart and their mind as well. When we think on things that are true, it helps us be stable. Our minds, our body, our emotions, we have these huge things called cycles. Don't we know that? I mean, as ladies, we know that. We all have all these different cycles. But there's similar cycles in our mind. And the Lord is so good because Jesus, who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He is the author of it all. He's the author of how all of us are wired. He's the author of how your kids are wired. Each one of our personalities, which are so unique and so different, he is very, very aware of how it all fits together. And sometimes those things can be very, very overwhelming to us if we don't understand what's going on. But you see, God's word can help us understand. Within our soul, where we have our mind, our will, and our emotions, sometimes there's balance, 
and sometimes there's imbalance. God knows about all of those things. He understands that if we hold bitterness too long inside of our heart, it can really mess up our bodies. And we can have chronic pain and digestive issues and all kinds of stuff that they're figuring out now that in the liberal world, they're starting to say, hey, you know, forgiveness is a really good idea. Huh? We have the Bible. We should have mastered this by now. I should have mastered this by now. I am right there with you on walking through all of this stuff. As the Lord gives different opportunities in my body for me to kind of tune in and say, wake up, there's something hurting, what's that all about? I have had to come to the Lord and say, wow, Lord, the things that I thought I knew, I knew nothing of. And praise God, you've given me another day, whether it's a day with pain or a day without pain, to address those issues so that I can come to you, Lord, God, and understand that there is a better way to live, that I don't have to be stuck, that I can be free, and that you all can be free. And when there's sibling rivalry going on with the, with the kids, no matter what age it is, but the younger you teach them, you will be friends, the better off they'll be. The younger you teach them to look each other in the eye and say, I forgive you, even if they don't mean it, and then you can talk about lying later, but have them look into each other's eye. I forgive you, I forgive you too. You have them look eye to eye and make that connection so that they can understand the habitual practice of what it is to actually forgive. What a gift you're giving your kids. You will be literally giving them a free life with much, much less of some of those chronic issues that we see throughout our country and the world. You are doing that in your day to day, in the stuff that you think is like obnoxiously annoying to have to continually do this, but you're setting them up for the rest of their life. And it's just, it's so beautiful. It's important that we recognize this because when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, he was not kidding. He really is the way. This was God talking. He made the way, he wrote it down in scripture, and then he came out and lived the way that we all should live. He is the truth. If you wanna think on things that are true, you think about Jesus. If you wanna get to the truth of the matter, think about Jesus and model how he would act and the way he would create in his mind of judgment. And we'll talk about the woman caught in adultery in a, in a little bit. But like the mindset of setting captives free, that is the truth about Jesus. And because of that, he's the life. He is our life. He is our life. The two things are inseparable as Christians. The man that spoke to us was more than the master. He was more than a master. He was more than just a deity. He was God. He said, if you know me, you also know my father. That's the very next scripture after John 14, 6 is John 14, 7. So just write that down. And then later this week, just go ahead and journal about that a little bit. And I think you'll be really blessed. Thinking on things that are true. So I said, we don't have necessarily daily homework this, this, this round. <laughs> but this week, if you could just meditate on Psalm 104, I think it would really bless you. And just go through and ask God to show you where are things that are true, where are things that are noble, where are things that are right, where are things that are pure, where are things that are lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Break down that Psalm and just ask yourself those questions and meditate, be chewing on the word of God. And I do think that you will be blessed. I know as moms, a lot of times you feel like, wow, these kids are gonna be the death of me, right? These kids are really, they, this is it. I'm, today's the day I'm dying. They are gonna be the death of me. I, wanted, I want to refer back to last winter, um, I told you that I had a new friend. He, he's in heaven. His name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So I decided to do a little bit more digging into this man, Dietrich. And uh, I've been reading a book uh, that I, am, I just, I, I love it. So I'm not gonna share it because I don't wanna throw anybody off. Um, some people think that Dietrich Bonhoeffer could maybe lean on the side of legalism. 
But in my estimation now, I really think it's the opposite. I think that his call for us to be disciples was something that we, it's hard to wrap your head around a, a person like that. Practically, his writings practically point to himself becoming a martyr, which is what happened. Um, but he said something that I think is actually extremely beautiful in terms in, okay, okay, I'll tell you, it's the cost of discipleship. But just be careful when you read it. Brett was like, okay, be careful when you're reading that book. And I'm like, wait, what? And so I've just been really blessed while I've read it. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm behind on my slides. This is a good station break. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Hold on. This is actually great. I'm gonna, the Lord did this. I'm gonna tell you a very, very cool reason why God confirmed me to read this book, The Cost of Discipleship, okay? So you guys know that Brett's been going through the Beatitudes, right? He's been going through the book of Matthew, so thus the Beatitudes. Um, okay, then you know, uh, remember when he did The Rich Young Ruler? Remember that, that weekend? Okay, so to the paragraph, I literally was reading in the cost of discipleship and I'm reading about the rich young ruler. And, and so Brett had given me like two sentences of caution. Just, just be careful when you're reading cost of discipleship. Some people can get hung up on legalism, stuff like that. And I was like, okay, great, noted. So I read, I'm reading and I'm reading about the rich young ruler. And I'm like, wow, wow, this is a really, this is a really good sermon on the rich young ruler. And Brett walks in the room and he goes, I'm thinking about doing a sermon on the rich young ruler. I'm like, huh, go back to my book. And then I don't, I, I don't tell him, like, guess what I'm reading right now? I don't tell him any of that because he, he not, he's not reading that. He's not at all. It's like, I'm like, wow, that's insane confirmation. And then I listen to his sermon and I'm like, oh my goodness, when Brett some days in heaven, he and Dietrich are gonna have a lot to talk about. Cause it was like point by point. Like, it's like they talked about it. I can't, I couldn't even believe it. And he's not read that. So I, I just, I was so blown away by that. But also I was blessed because of the comp, like I was able to hear a sermon plus read a sermon. I mean, it was just really fun. I don't know. It's probably, maybe that's a pastor's wife thing. I don't know. But it was fun for me. Sorry if you don't get it. But what was cool is that Brett and I were able to sit down and talk about the rich young ruler. And I was able to really talk and, and fellowship with Brett about that and go, you know, here's the thing. I think that the rich young ruler, if it, it and, and I was talking to one of my friends, Susie, who, raise your hand, Susie, raise your hand. Yep, yep, yep. I was talking to her about this and her husband because we had gotten together and I was like, guys, guys, this is what I think. I think that the rich young ruler, he, he just literally, he just should have like laid down everything, laid it all down and like gone on his knees and said, you are the Christ, you're God, you're everything. I'm just giving you everything. Because he would have not walked away sad. And the fact is, he maybe would have even walked away rich. Because God does that sometimes. Sometimes people literally submit their entire life to God. And God says, great, now take it back and use it for my kingdom. But the rich young ruler walked away sad because he had in his own mind a level of perfectionism that he thought he had reached. And so he thought, hey, hey, what up, Jesus? You know, and he was like, you're perfect, I'm perfect, so here's what we got. He didn't understand that what was missing was this radical conflict of actually not completely giving himself over to Christ. So back to the quote that I was gonna share when the Lord allowed me to get my slides off a little bit. When Christ calls a man, he bids him to come and die. So when I said earlier, like the kids, they're gonna be the death of you. Yeah, they are. They actually are, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But see, we have it all flipped upside down, don't we? In our society, we have everything all about, it's like the funnel is like tipped upside down. It's all messed up. Like we, we're so not open to what God would have for us that we are drained and we're empty and we're all these things. And it doesn't mean you don't need rest because you do. And it doesn't mean that you don't need to eat right or exercise or all the things. But it's just, we are so upside down that we completely argue over and over and over within ourselves about what it is God's doing really because of our kids. 
Like they literally are a part of the process of us getting pruned and take God taking away all the stuff that shouldn't be a part of our life because it's not producing fruit. And God wants you to produce fruit. And it doesn't have anything to do with being perfect. And you're gonna feel sometimes like you are gonna die. And that's when you need to think about what my friend here says and what Jesus, God says, that it's okay. Dying to yourself is great. And less of you and more of God is great. It's always great. That's always the best answer. And at first it can sound a little bit harsh, but really that's where your greatest freedom is. In Luke 9.23 it says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In Luke 14.33 it says, Whosoever ye be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. So see, that's what was going on with the rich young ruler. God wanted all of him. Don't be afraid to surrender every last bit of you to God. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25 through 27, it says, every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore run not as uncertainly, so I fight not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. This is a good reminder of the challenges that we have as mothers, to not blow off scripture and its application to our lives as we're living examples to our children, no matter what age. Our dedication to God matters. And it's sobering. And it keeps us on the straight. But it's true. That's week one. True. <laughs> we need to think on things that are true. Our kids are watching and it's a healthy, healthy accountability. We are saved by grace, there's no question, but we're beckoned, we're beckoned by God. We're summoned to discipleship, and it is a higher calling. We have to remember that while we're saved by grace, it is Jesus who has completely justified us. There's, it's not gonna be a contest of how good we can be. That's never what it will be. He is the Christ, he's the Lord. And sometimes he may call us, like he asked the rich young ruler, he may call us to surrender. Bonhoeffer also said, the disciple is dragged out of his relative security into a life of absolute insecurity, that is in truth, into the absolute security of safety of the fellowship of Jesus. From a life which is observable and calculable, it is in fact quite incalculable, into a life where everything is unobservable and fortuitous. That is into one which is necessary and calculable. Out of the realm of finite, which is in truth the infinite, into the realm of infinite possibilities, which is the one liberating reality. No other significance is possible since Jesus is the only significance. Beside Jesus, nothing has any significance. He alone matters. When we are called to follow Christ, we are summoned to an exclusive attachment to his person. The grace of his call bursts all the bonds of legalism. It is a gracious call, a gracious commandment. It transcends the difference between law and the gospel. Christ's call, the disciple will follow. That is the grace and commandment. I will walk at liberty for I seek thy commandments. And that quote scripture is from Psalm 119, 45, if you wanna write that down. I will walk at liberty for I seek thy commandments. So this higher calling of discipleship, you're called to it as a mom. You're asking your kids to obey. So why should you ask your kids to obey if you yourself will not do it? We don't wanna raise our kids to be good liars. We do not want them to get good at faking it. 
Every single part of our life needs to be surrendered. That's the truth. Every single part of our life, in order to be truly free, we really do need to take all of it to Christ. Do we have shame? Sometimes. Is there humiliation? Yes. We are called to be humble. The Bible says that God hates pride. Be the mom who shares humility with her kids. Don't be the prideful mom. Be willing to say you're sorry when you're wrong. Be willing to admit that you're wrong. It's hard, but God hates pride. It is what kicked the devil out of heaven, his pride. God will not live with it. He will not have the two together. You have to separate yourself from that. I have to separate myself from that. How many times in our relationship, if, if you've been married more than five seconds, how many times in your relationship have you had to die, die to yourself and admit that you're wrong and say that you're sorry? And there's shame and there's humiliation and there's all those things that we don't, we don't like those feelings because our pride's getting in the way. And yet God calls us to be free. In John chapter eight, Jesus said, go and sin no more to the woman who was caught in adultery. He gave her pardon. He asked her as he was writing in the sand, where are your accusers? And she was free to say, they're not here. And he said, go, go and sin no more. Now you and I both know that she was gonna sin again probably once in her life, right? But the invitation for her was to be free, to be free, to fully have her life completely surrounded with Christ. And that's what we're called to. So recall that. Maybe write down in the journal for you to look at chapter eight this week. Maybe that's something, if it's not too overwhelming, that's great. Just know that there is grace that God wrote in the sand, her freedom. And that same mercy and that same forgiveness and freedom is also for you and it's for me and it's for your kids. It's for your kids. So when they say they're sorry, remember John 8. Remember John 8 and help your kids to truly understand that they can start over, that there's freedom, that there's freedom Go and sin no more. You know your little guy or girl are gonna sin, but give them the opportunity to walk in that freedom because we can forgive ourselves and we need to give our kids the freedom to forgive themselves too and to forgive each other and to have that positive interaction as a family. If you wanna write down Psalm 119, 68, it says, you are good and you do what is good. Teach me your statutes. Teach your kids that God is good and that what he does is good. You write that one down and put it on your refrigerator and make it so that it's, they get a cookie when they know that, okay? Because teaching them the truth about God, that he is good and that the things he does are good, that is an amazing strength of truth for you to give to your kids. It's a beautiful thing. Now I wanted to show you a couple things in Psalm 119. And this is just really for us to be able to kind of ponder, but I love, I have a couple of different versions. Some people like different versions of the Bible. So I just wanted to show you three that I like from this particular, I'm gonna do like three scriptures tonight to show you. Because as we take time this week and you're journaling, maybe you also will say, oh, hey, I like this version or I like this version. And the Titus two moms that were standing there and Judy and the counseling team or pastoral team, the elders and deacons, I mean, they are really ready to ask you which versions not to go to. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you three that are, are just are really fun for me. I get fed and so I go to these three. I love the NIV. Not, I would have not chosen the NIV, but Brett got it for me a long, long, long time ago. And I love that Bible so much. For years, Judy and I have had the same NIV. And I love that too. 
because I think, oh, this is so fun. Judy reads out of the same you know, Bible. So, and then the Life Application Bible, which is new to me. My friend Susie loves that Bible. And I think, oh, this is so fun. This is the Bible that she loves to read out of. And then the other one is the CSB, which that we have in the bookstore, the She Reads Truth Bible. I love the Christian Standard Bible. I love it. And I wanted to encourage you, if the bookstore is going to be open, it's going to be open all um, of the five weeks before and after the study. But I really just wanted to encourage you to maybe peruse and go in there. And there's a couple things if you were going to save your pennies for. So I really, really would encourage you to pick up a copy because we ordered extra. I think they've arrived. But um, Daily Light is an amazing, sweet little daily devotional that every day you can open it up and just have a little bit of time, if that's all you have, just a little bit of scripture. And then in the evening, just another little bit of scripture. And if you quiet yourself down and you just read through the scriptures, you'll notice that they're not notated right after the scripture. They're notated actually down below. So you have to read it thematically. And you have to say, what is the Lord showing me in this day with these scriptures? And it's so cool because every day there's gonna be something that's new and and neat. But then at the same time, you're gonna, over the course of time, be memorizing all these scriptures, you know? So it's it's really fun. So essentially, um, with these three three next scriptures that I'm I'm gonna show you tonight, I just wanna show you a little bit about different variety of the Bible and then also what it's like when you can pull some scriptures together and how there's a theme. So tonight, obviously, the theme is about truth. And the theme also is about God's word and how the connection of Christ with God's word, you can't pull them apart. They are the same. So here on this one, it says, your word is forever. It is firmly fixed in heaven. So that's the CSB version. Your eternal word stands firm in heaven. And I like the way that sounds too. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. So so I love that. I love that because what I learn is, man, your word is forever. Wait, 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 Jesus, you're the word. You are forever. You're firmly fixed in heaven. Wow, I can count on you, Jesus. Wow, you're eternal. You stand firm. That's amazing. Like that is bringing out the word of God in a way that's connecting Jesus in your daily life. When you look at scripture and you connect it to the Lord like that, it's just a blessing and reminding yourself, he's the way, the truth and the life. And so when you get into the word and you see these different scriptures and the references, you can just have joy and you can also share that with your kids. So here's another one from Psalm 119, 96. I've seen a limit all perfection, but your command is without limit. Even perfection, this is the same scripture, but in the life application, even perfection has limits, but your commands have no limits. And then in the NIV version, to all perfection, I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. So what can we teach ourselves and then pass that right on to our kids? What can we teach ourselves about the Lord through that? Well, we can say, whoa, like the rich young ruler, there's a limit to perfection. There is a limit, except with God. There's no limit to his perfection because his word is perfect. And Jesus is the word. Jesus is perfect. So we can take that away. We can say, wow, Lord, your commands have no limits. Like Jesus has no limits. There's nothing God cannot do because he truly is God. To all perfection, I see a limit. So even in our own measurement of what we think is perfect, there is a limit, but your commands are boundless. Do you see the takeaway that we can do? And it's, it's not hard and you guys can do this for your kids. In Psalm 119, verse 91, your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you, everything serves your plans, for all things are your servants. So you can see there's a little bit of a different twist on each one of these um, interpretations, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful. All things 
serve God. What a place of stability for you to be able to tell your kids. Like, it doesn't matter how crazy everything is out here. Like, things are serving God. Everything serves his plan. That's stability. That's something that we need as moms. We need to be stable. We need to wake up in the morning and say, everything serves God. Everything. All things are a servant of God. Even the stuff we do not get. To be able to tell our kids, going a couple uh, slides earlier where we talked about, you are good and what you do is good. If we look through that lens, seeing Jesus as the Christ, as the word who was sent to die on our behalf, the risen Lord who calls us to follow him just like he called his disciples, it's not any different. It is the same as though you were Peter or Andrew. It's the same. When he says, follow me, that's what you also can share with your kids. Christ asks that we follow him. And so as we follow him, you can encourage your kids to follow Jesus. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. What a place of confidence for you to be able to give your kids and your own mind that every word of God, every word of God proves true. Proves true. That's our theme tonight, true. Every word of God proves true. Jesus will show you. He's gonna show me how he proves true. And it's so good. He is our shield. He's a shield to all who come to him for protection. It doesn't mean that life's not gonna be bumpy. It will be bumpy. Lots of bumps. Remember what we talked about earlier, to the Christian, you're called to die. We are dying every day. But every single thing that God says will prove true. And he's a shield to all who come to him for protection. That is what's true. As we close, let's just remember what our theme for this study is. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We have a few more words to go before our study's over. I'm so thankful that you're all here and I'm thankful for what the Lord's gonna be doing in the next few weeks. God bless you and, and let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for our time. I thank you for the blessing that you've given us, Lord. Every moment that we have on this earth, each breath that we take, Lord, may we just be women who walk in a way that glorifies you, Lord. And it doesn't mean that we won't make mistakes because we know that we will, but we're just so thankful that you love us so thoroughly and that you really do summon us, you beckon us to follow you, Lord. So let us do that with our whole hearts. And as we do that, Lord, I just thank you so much that as it's less and less of our flesh and it's more and more of you living in us, Lord, you dwelling within us, that we really do find peace and freedom. So I just pray that each mom here would be so blessed and that we would just have new vision and fresh direction for as we go about our way, Lord. And, and so I pray for each gal that you would give traveling mercies and for our online audience that you'd bless them with sweet fellowship and travel home as well. And we lift this rest of this night up to you in Jesus' name, amen.